How's it going? This is OXDF uh, looking at Forge from Hack the Box. We're doing a little bit of a Beyond Root dig in here. Um, we're trying to answer the question, how is this web server making a web request, uh, which as far as we've seen so far is using requests, the uh, Python library, um, and we know we can use it and support FTP. And request does not support FTP. And so I'll show you that in a minute. Um, we're gonna do two couple things a little different today. One, um, I got a camera. We're, we're, we're trying to see if we're playing with new things here. Um, let me know if this is useful or if you get annoyed watching me kind of bounce around as I type. Uh, and the second thing is, we're gonna take a really kind of long route to get there. And you know, whenever I talk to people who are just getting into Hack the Box and they ask me questions like, all right, you know, how do I learn all this stuff? There's so much to learn. And the answer is just like, you gotta always be curious. You gotta just keep wanting to understand things. And so, you know, I always tell people when you get a flag, great, you got root. Um, you also happen to have root on a box now, like a box that's meant to look like a real machine out in the world. And so use that to your advantage, go explore it, see if you can understand it. And if, you know, ask yourself some questions and then go test your hypotheses on these boxes. Um, you're root too, so you can turn things off and on, you can mess with things. I mean, try to be respectful of other people in a shared lab, but you know, you can really go and use this as your chance to learn. Um, when I first got into Hack the Box, I had done incident response um, and some like threat analysis involving web logs and involving actors exploiting uh, web servers, et cetera. But I didn't really know how a web server was set up and you know, I'd never configured one myself. And uh, it was playing hack the box where I started to ask the questions, okay, well, how does, why, why does this web server even start on boot? Um, where is it configured to be running out of this directory or where are the files stored? Um, and you can answer these questions. So um, we're gonna dive in, we're gonna answer the question, uh, how is the web server hitting up FTP? Um, we're gonna take a long route to get there and really explore a little bit along the way. So um, especially for people just beginning, this should be interesting. Um, if, you look, if you're going, eh, I don't really care about all that, I just wanna jump ahead. Uh, there will be timestamps down in the description. So just jump to the Python part and uh, that's probably the part you care about, so. Um, with that, let's dive in. All right, so I've got my root shell on this box. Um, I've, actually, I've actually grabbed the SSH key and SSH in. And so we're gonna start from real basics, right? Uh, what, what's, what's running as the web server? So we could do something like a PS AUX dub dub, which is my favorite way to do a process list. Um, and we could see some stuff going on here that's actually less, oh, let's try AUX dub dub. There we go. Um, Less than expected, you get you get all the full command lines, and and if I were doing this box and I didn't know what was going on right now, this is my favorite way to look through a process list. Um, it's a little bit tedious and painful, but you can step through all of the different processes, look for anything that's interesting, might have credentials, might tell you what's running, etc. Um, this box also happens to have a PS tree on it, which is a really nice way. It's, I don't think it's a default, but um, let's make this a little smaller. Let's see if we can uh, get it all on one page. Uh, um, it's a really nice way to lay out like what's spawned from what. And so, you know, you can see here, system D starts with the whole thing. Um, and then you, here's our Apache 2 process. That's Apache 2 is a web server. So that's certainly our web server. Um, this down here looks sketchy as all get out, right? You got this, um, you have SSHD with, a, with looks like three different SSH sessions coming in. Uh, one of which is calling uh, pseudo Python 3 bash. Um, and getting, this is actually my shell. Um, again, I got a full write-up on this. You can go check out my blog. I'll put a link in the description um, for how to exploit this box, but um, I should probably kill those sessions if, you know, OPSEC or whatever. Um, but but we know right now Apache 2 looks like our web server. So um, we could ask the question, like, how is Apache 2 starting? Um, and we can see it's coming from system D. Um, so we could do like a grep uh, minus IR for case insensitive and recursive with a little bit bigger on uh, the Etsy folder. That's just where you want to go to look for services. So let's say system D, uh, oops, in the Etsy folder, we're going to look for Apache, for example. Um, and there's nothing there. Okay. Um, the older version of way services got set up as a NIT D. So we'll look maybe in that folder. And here we go. So we got some stuff. Um, and if we wanted to just like orient, we could also do, I think it's L, but just show us the file name. So we can say, okay, um, here's these two init D scripts. Um, I'm not going to dive into it right now, but a rabbit hole you could choose to go down is understanding how init scripts work. Um, you know, if you wanted to just quickly take a look at this, this is just going to be a shell script um, that is, you know, handles how it starts um, and it meets a certain spec. Um, so if you wanted to go learn more about init scripts, you should do so. This is, you know, take this advantage as use this example to figure it out. Um, we're not going to mess with that right now. So uh, we know it's Apache. We know it's starting on boot. Um, or at least it's got a service and it's started from system D. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so let's say, uh, let's go into the Etsy uh, Apache 2 directory. Um, now it happens, if you look in here, 
you've got the apache2.conf, which defines the web server general configuration. Um, but when it comes to actually standing up site, what you want to do is these, these two sites available and sites enabled folders. Um, so if we look in sites uh, available first, what you'll see, in fact, let's do an ls minus l so you can see it, um, is we have these four comp files and uh, they define how a site might look. Uh, but just being in sites available doesn't actually mean anything. Uh, in Apache, if you want it to actually be hosted as a site, you want to put it in sites available, uh, enabled. And the standard practice for that is to have a sim link pointing back to the site, the comp file in sites available. So you can define lots of sites in the sites available and then link the ones you want to actually have running into enabled and that enables them. Um, cool, so let's take a look. Uh, let's go to sites enabled. Oops. Busy sites, sites enabled, there we go. Uh, and we'll look at the first one, OO default. Um, now there's a bunch of comments here. This looks like it's probably what came with the with the installation. Um, we can see the host is listening on port 80 on all hosts, uh, all interfaces. Um, it's got an admin and you know this one line really is what tells us all we need to know about this host. It's basically redirecting anything starting with a slash, so anything, uh, to forge.hack the beat forge.hackbox. And we saw that um, if, you, if we came in here and if we do 10, 10, 11, 11 .111, uh, you can see right away, I get redirected to forge. Um, you know, I've, I got a video I can on how I configure burp to, you know, always be getting it based on pat, based on any hack the box uh, patterns. So we can come over here and we can see, we just made a request to here. The 302 found came back um, and redirected us to forge.hackthebox. So that's that whole, uh, that's that whole, server right there. Um, let's open up forge.hackthebox then. Um, so it's also a virtual host listening on port 80. It's got this server name, forge.hackthebox, and uh, or forge.htb. If you come over here, I guess maybe I should, I was gonna say I didn't really need burp size, but maybe I want to real quick, let's see, user options, display, make this 18, make you big as well. So all right, so back here in proxy under HTTP history. Uh, so we, now we're getting forge.hack the box. What's different here is this host header is being sent along with it. And the, in the original, the host header was the IP address. Uh, but now this host header forge.hack the box matches on server name forge.hack the box. And that says use this server. Um, if we look, the previous one didn't have this defined at all. So it's sort of just the catch all. Um, all right, so we're back in forge.com. Um, now there's a WSGI script alias uh, pointing at var www forge .whiskey, um, and that applies to the slash, as well as uh, static is pointing at the static folder. Um, and so anything, what's, what's interesting here is you've got this, uh, so this alias here, um, and then you could, you've, these directories, so what is a forge.whiskey? Um, that's another one, another rabbit hole that uh, I would invite you as you get more comfortable with this and you're looking for things to explore, go figure out how, what whiskey is and how whiskey works. Um, it's a Python related thing that has to do with how you link a Python script, like running Flask to something like Apache to host it. Um, and so you could figure that out with a little bit of Googling, again, getting into the details. You could do that today. You could not do that today. We're gonna skip it for today. Um, these uh, directories here, all of this means is allow, or you're gonna process your allows and then your denies, but it doesn't matter here because we only have one allow, allow from all. Um, so there's an error log defined, custom log defined. Um, but what we, the real important part is we've got our directory to where we wanna look, var www forge forge uh, var www forge forge. So that's, that's where these files are gonna be hosted out of. Um, and then we can, while we're here, just take a quick look at admin.com. Um, and it's gonna look very similar. So again, we have our server name defined. So if we have the host of admin.forge.hackthebox, we'll end up in this server. Um, similarly, it's another WSGI uh, script alias. Uh, and now we're in var www admin admin or admin admin WSGI. Um, so we should head, look, that's a good clue. Let's head into uh, var www. Uh, HTML is the default one and there's nothing there. Um, let's go start in forge. And we're getting closer to uh, our question of how is request possibly doing this. Um, the WSGI file, I'll be honest, I don't have a great feeling for that. And I might go, this video is kind of making me want to go check it out. Um, if we open it up, I can tell you what it basically do, is doing is setting up the configuration for the Flask server to run. Um, so it's providing the things that need to be linked into between Apache and the Flask and how Flask gets started. 
Um, so you can see things like it's giving it the path. Um, this virtual environment is being used. Um, I wonder if this is actually used somewhere else. Um, so yeah, it's actually executed here to um, activate the the virtual environment, which is how the libraries all get loaded in. Um, defining some configuration, there's a secret key and there's some exceptions. Uh, there's an upload folder that's probably referenced in the script. Um, and then it imports forge.route, and that's gonna be the important part here. Um, oh, so actually, start. we'll start here. From Forge, import app as application. Um, and then we import forge.routes. And so we'll want to check out both of those things. Um, now, that means from Forge and forge.routes are both going to be in the Forge directory. So we're going to go in there. Um, from Forge, we imported something. If it didn't define the file, then it's going to be in the init.py. So we can vim that and take a look real quick. Um, and you can see this is where we just create a Flask app, import Flask, create a Flask app, run, you know, if this is main, run it, but it's probably not main here. Um, but then we're going to import that app. Um, and so then we also imported the routes. So we'll take a look at that. Um, again, if you've never seen a Flask app before, um, come to Forge, SSH in, and play with this Flask app and see if you can understand it. Um, I've got, that. that's how I learned how to make Flask apps, honestly. Um, so if we come down here, let's see, um, you remember, we'll remember that there was a, a deny list preventing, you know, certain phrases from showing up. And so we can see where that's defined here. Um, we can see that the upload route, if the method is local or remote, it, it calls these two different functions. Um, in Flask, these decorators define um, how you tie a web URL to what function gets called. So if you visit just the straight up slash, you're going to get this index function, which just returns index, index.html. Uh, when you visit slash upload, you could take a method post or get, and then you know we can do the different things based on it. Um, so we have our upload remote file here. We check and make sure our URL starts with uh, either HTTP or HTTPS. Otherwise, we throw invalid protocol. Here's all we support. Uh, here's the check for the blacklist to make sure. It's, and then if you know if we hit something, it returns the uh, message here that you contain a blacklisted thing. Uh, otherwise, it gets the file, it saves the file, uh, and then it returns the file, you know, sent to that URL. Um, so that all makes, that's basically what I expected coming in for the main site. Um, so let's, with that, let's go back up here and we will do a little jumping ahead and just assume, you know, in the admin directory of the same kind of structure, we have this admin.wizgy and the admin folder. Let's go into admin. And we can see we have a routes file. Um, nothing special about the name routes, but if you remember uh, in the admin.wizgy, it was imported uh, admin.routes. So that's that's the file that gets written in. So now we're there. Um, and again, we here we have our upload. And we can see that if the method is post and locals in request, well, that's not us. If the method is post and remote is in request, okay. Um, if the URL, okay, so if there's no URL, it's going to complain that there's no URL. Um, ah, so it does, it's in, this is kind of kludgy, but um, it's going to call upload remote file here if there's a post request with remote in the keys. Um, if there's a get request, um, and because we'll, one of the things we'll remember is when we first got access to the admin web page through the SSRF, we could see it said that get requests were now supported and that FTP was now supported. And so, uh, you can see here this U, it's, it's checking to see if there's a U parameter, which is how we pass the argument we wanted to get. And it's calling a different function, which is interesting. I wouldn't expect that. I mean, in real life, this would almost certainly call the same function here. Um, but sure, okay. Um, I guess that actually means, you know, if we go look at upload remote file, uh, you can see this actually is just using requests, just like it was. And so uh, this won't get FTP, this will fail. Um, but if we get upload from URL, that's different. And let's let's check out that function. Oops, load from URL. Uh, so we pass in the argument. If it starts with HTTP or HTTPS, we just pass it back to upload remote file. Okay. Uh, if it starts with FTP, then we're going to take it. Um, we're going to pass it through shellx quote. Um, if you're not familiar with this, shellx is a uh, library for escaping. Um, things to try to make things safe so make things safer um so we can come over here let's do a little zoom that zoom 
Zoom, there we go. Uh, quote. Um, and so run a shell escaped version of the string, or return a shell escaped version of the string. This can be safely used as a token in a shell command line for cases where you can't use a list. Um, so the whole point of this is to prevent command injection. And so uh, you can see we're going to now run so pro sub process and curl. Um, so that that there we go. We've answered our question. Uh, we're not actually using requests to do FTP. We're using curl, and curl is friendly at that. Um, and so um, this is this looks really unsafe on first. Well, I mean, when I first saw this, I went, "Oh, that's command injectable." Um, but it is, you know, because of the shellx quote up here. Uh, I don't think it is actually command injectable. So that's, I guess, good. Good for them. Um, and so yeah, there's the answer. We're going to actually call curl, and uh, I can show this. We can see. If we do Python 3 import requests and we do something like uh, requests.get FTP 127.001 slash like that, we're going to get this big no connection adapters were found. I think it's technically possible to add a thing called a connection adapter that shows how to get FTP. Um, I think it's really hard to do and I don't think it's, it's not the Pythonic way to do it, right? If you want to do FTP, there's an FTP library you can import. Uh, so we'll stop it. We'll stop it with that. Um, we can show that we can do, if we do curl FTP 127.001 that, I think we're going to get something back. Oh, we get access to, oh, um, well, we get access tonight, which is at least showing us that uh, it's not worth, you know, that we did talk to FTP and fail. Um, I guess to really show it, let me go, where did my, where do I have notes for the, uh, Let's see. Oh, it's on the oh, it's on the admin page. Let's see. Uh, cat templates announcements. There we go. Uh, I thought they were here. Let's. Oh, they're not. Field and announcements. Oh, we got to get it out of the um, vim routes. Py announce a n n o u and there's announcements. Announce. What's what's announce? Hmm, this is interesting. I said that now going down another rabbit hole. Um, A N N O U N C O U N C E. Okay. Oh, here we go. Got it. okay. So here's the announcements. Oh, this color's kind of bad. Let's see. Um, oh. Color scheme delect that, that, that gets a little better for the YouTube view. Um, so here's our here's our password. So now we curl FTP with the username password at. Maybe we have to ooh, curl open quote close quote. There we go. We're now we've now read off the FTP server. Um, I guess just for completeness, we can import requests, uh, requests.get, I mean, obviously, I don't think we got nearly this far, it's probably pretty clear already, but let's just, again, for completeness, uh, try that, and we still have the connection adapter failure, so, um, cool, we've answered the question, why, <laughs> why does it work with FTP on the admin site and not on the regular one? Um, looks like the admin had come in and decided that they wanted to add this and decided to use curl rather than uh, requests. Um, and hopefully you've seen a little bit of just like the wealth of things you can learn um, if you just give yourself the chance to play with it and go look it up. Um, you could just start by reading manuals if you wanna learn it. But for me, it's really useful to come in here and just like start asking questions and say, can I answer that? And if I can answer it, cool. And if I can't answer it, um, okay, then I, I need to go read until I can. So um, hopefully you found this was useful. Uh, let me know if you thought that having a video was interesting and uh, or having video of me was interesting. And uh, with that, I will talk to you next time. Um, thanks for sticking around until the end.